Hey students and welcome to the party that never stops, that is education, or as I like to call it, inspiration, wisdom, critical thinking, and using your own independent mind to examine and investigate new and exciting ideas. Let's get going. This video is about staying focused at university. You need to know what being focused is. What are the barriers that stop you from being focused? Being focused at university is easier said than done. So today in this video, we're gonna explore some of those tricks of the trade to stay focused at university. We're gonna be looking at how to get things done, how to control your behavior, how to use your energy effectively, how to overcome fears and barriers, and finally, how to stay motivated. So we're gonna look at those five things in this video today of how to stay focused. What I would advise first of all is getting things done one task at a time. So that means you might have three different modules that you're attending to, three different types of lectures. That's three possible assignments that they give you. So you've got three assignments on your shoulders. What, Which one do you do first? How do you approach it? How do you tackle that? Well, you've got to really measure your task. Take a deep breath, stay cool, and have a look at what your tasks are, okay? Have a look at those three assignments, check the deadlines first, have a look how many words are required to complete each assignment, and try to plan things, try to prioritize your tasks. More importantly than prioritizing your tasks is focus on getting one task done at a time. Now, when I say getting one task done at a time, that might not necessarily mean getting one assignment finished and then moving on to the next assignment. Sometimes you've got to jump between assignments. It's not an ideal thing to do, but sometimes it happens. When that does happen, when you've got two deadlines that are near each other of two different assignments, have a look at the subjects of those assignments. Some of the subjects might be connected and related, actually, to those two assignments. Use that to your advantage, because you might end up using the same references for each assignment. So. Getting one task done at a time might be mixed between two or even three assignments because if this assignment is talking about improving medical practice, then the other assignment might be connected with that and it might be something to do with what are the barriers stopping improvements from happening or whatever subject it is, okay? So you've got to find connections between your assignments and have a look at it. If they are two totally different assignments, then I would really strongly suggest getting one done and get it out of the way and finish it. But if you see links between the assignments, then that is an opportunity for you to multitask. That means getting one task done at a time, but sharing the same references between two or three assignments. What am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is that number one, of staying focused at university is you must focus on getting one task done at a time. It doesn't matter how small that task is, if, it's, if you're getting it done, it's out of the way, it's finished, move on to the next task. When you're trying to get your tasks done one step at a time, you're gonna come across some distractions. Yes, there are lots of distractions. I know about most of them because I've been at university myself, done my undergraduate and I've done my master's and I know that there are many distractions. What I would suggest you do about those distractions is first try to identify those distractions. First, recognize your distractions and then secondly, use your distractions to your advantage. Aha. Uh -huh. So what you can do is you can use your distractions as a reward system. And what I mean by that is by swapping bad habits with good habits. Because let's face it, if you've got a bad habit, you can't just suddenly stop doing it, whatever it is. You're going to have to replace bad habits with good habits. So what I mean by that is you need to first look at what things are distracting you and what are your bad habits. Are they productive or are they unproductive? Do they serve you well? Do they give you a boost? Do they motivate you? Do they allow you to get into the zone, to get into your mind ready, focused to do work? Or are they really 
holding you back and stopping you from getting your work done? And are they putting you into that lazy mode where you're like, nah, nah, can't really be bothered to do this. Your habits and your distractions should serve your purpose. You should use them to motivate yourself. What I mean by that is use your distractions and your habits that you do to keep you in a productive mind. You might use them as little rewards after you've finished an assignment or you might actually do those habits before you start an assignment to get them out of the way quickly. You can use your distractions as small breaks as well because I mean let's face it it is very important to have a break and speaking of breaks water spring water you really should be drinking lots of water to stay focused at university just drink water as much as you can and the best way to do that is to have the bottle of water right there in front of you as you're reading a book or as you're typing up your assignment you have to build productive habits so those habits should be healthier habits more productive habits habits that are going to serve as a reward after you get the work done or habits that are going to give you a small break uh, in the middle of doing an assignment and they have to be habits that are going to keep you locked into that focused world you have to be in that zone of being there in that zone in that environment in that time in that moment to just boom get things done and sometimes you need to analyze what your habits are to get you into that particular mood. Sometimes as well, if you're not in that mood and you're trying to get into that mood, you'll find that the productivity is gone. It doesn't, it's not there. What some students do is they don't start their assignment until they are in that mood, that productive mood. Well, hey, be careful because that's dangerous. You don't have time to feel like mm, today I'm not in the mood I'll leave it till tomorrow uh, uh, this morning I'm tired I'm not in the mood I'll leave it till the evening oh uh, and now I've got to have dinner uh, it's late and I'm a, bit, I'm a bit tired I'll just watch a movie and I'm not in the mood so be careful because don't allow your moods to dictate your life don't allow your bad behaviors to control you and direct your life okay you need to be in control of your habits and you need to be in control of your own behavior the only way that you can do that is by analyzing what those distractions are and those bad habits are and replacing them with better ones that will serve you and that will guide you and support you to get into that motivated productive mood and when you are still not in that productive motivated mood to get your work done you have to force it you have to sit down and and build habits you have to build a routine because you sit down and um, switch your phone off turn all the all these distractions and things off and sit there and get it done now guess what when that happens you might get a very 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 small amount of work done like a very small amount of work you might not hardly get anything accomplished in that time but at least you've made a start and at least you've dived into the water and gave it a shot because guess what you've done you've now you've just trained your mind into being in that environment with your laptop and with your phone off and everything no TV and stuff like that you've just trained your mind to be into that mode even if it's like you finished your introduction which is maybe gonna be like three four sentences you've managed to achieve that guess what don't look badly on that because you need to be proud of yourself for getting those three or four sentences done because you've made a start and that's the most important thing is to make a start because once you start something it's then in your mind and then you will then want to naturally finish it and then you you build a routine you have to build a routine and a habit of sitting down on your desk and maybe get another five sentences done and another five or whatever okay sure you might get a little bit stressed with deadlines but that's another issue that I will discuss later always keep things moving and flowing if you achieve something and you're like yes I achieved that introduction I finished it I've got I've done a good introduction I've done enough work now I'm proud of myself I'll leave it there no I know this sounds crazy but probably a lot of you have already done it and you know exactly what I mean when you're in the zone and you're keeping things flowing 
It doesn't matter what time it is. It could be 3 a.m. at night. It could be early morning, whatever, afternoon, breakfast time, dinner time, whatever. If you're in that zone and you're getting stuff done, keep it going, keep it up. You can get a good rest later. The most important thing is to feel proud of your efforts. Always feel proud of your efforts. Always repeat good behavior that accelerates your productivity. Always try to eat healthy foods. Reward yourself and motivate yourself because you're worth it. Right, now the third thing of staying focused at university is having a vision. Yes, quite similar to what Arnold Schwarzenegger said in one of his very motivational speeches that he made, is staying focused at university requires you to have a vision, okay? You need to have a vision, you need to have a long-term vision, okay? And if you don't have a long-term vision of where you want to be in the future, that's okay. That's also fine, but more importantly than having a long-term vision is having short-term visions. You need to visualize how your presentation is going to turn out like next week or maybe in two or three day days time. You, you need to see yourself in your mind of you doing your presentation and how is it going to look, how are you going to behave, what are you going to do in that presentation? You need to visualize things. Visualization is so key. Now, if you don't understand what I mean by having a vision of what you want to achieve in life, you need to have an aim. And remember, with every small accomplishment, you get closer to your long-term achievement. So always praise yourself and always recognize the small tasks that you've just accomplished, that you've just achieved. The small achievements are often the best ones to feel proud of, to recognize your effort. Because when you recognize your effort, you're having a look at the journey that you're making and you're recognizing the progress that you're making. Because if you don't recognize your progress, then you could be going in any direction. You, you, you won't know what you're actually aiming to achieve. Always feel proud of the efforts that you make because when you do that and you recognize your own effort, you see the progression that you're making along your journey and that is very important to see and to recognize because it motivates you to get things done and to stay focused at university. Turning a fear into an energy that will serve you. If you turn your fears into fuel, into energy, you can use that energy. So what do I mean by that? Remember that everything is energy. So if you recognize your fear, you can control it, you can transform it into something more productive and you can then use that energy to get stuff done. Look, everything is energy. Even when you feel scared or you feel like held back that you don't want to achieve something, that's an energy. You're expressing an energy of fear. So what you want to do is recognize what are you scared of, turn that into an energy that you can use to get stuff done. And one of the secrets of doing that, if it sounds a bit tricky to do for you, you have to enjoy the journey and not the destination. Some people have a vision of where they want to be in the future, which is brilliant. As I said before, you need to have that vision, but they're not enjoying the journey of getting there to that destination. That's no good because if you don't enjoy moving forward to that vision that you want, then you're not gonna you're not gonna reach that destination because you're not enjoying the journey of reaching there. So you need to learn to enjoy that journey, that progression of reaching your final destination of what you actually want to achieve. One of the best things to turn a fear into fuel, into energy that you can use to stay motivated and focused at university is by keeping things moving, keeping things flowing. When you learn something new, that's great. Use that new knowledge, apply it and move on. The next piece of advice, you need to think and act like a problem solver. If you focus on solving problems instead of moaning about them and complaining about them, then you're using your energy much more wisely. So don't moan about stuff, be a problem solver. Whenever you're facing a barrier or a problem or an issue that you just can't get past, you can't make a table or do this crazy idea that you wanted to do on PowerPoint, whatever your problem is, you need to see it as a challenge. 
You need to recognize it as a challenge and stop moaning, stay focused for a second and then look at it and try to see it from a problem solver point of view. Try to solve that problem. Don't just allow it to stop your progression. Once you take some time to solve challenges and problems, you're going to learn something new. So the motivation is there that when you learn something new, then you know what you're doing now. Once you know what you're doing, that's half the battle completed. Things are much easier once you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, you need to ask someone for help, or you can just learn about something yourself. If you learn something with yourself, then you'll feel proud that you have overcome that barrier, and you'll feel good about yourself. You're now a problem solver. Well done see those barriers and those problems and challenges as an opportunity to learn something new. And the way to solve problems, because it's very easy for me to say, oh yeah, you need to solve problems, you need to be a problem solver. How the hell do you solve problems? How do you be a problem solver? What you need to do is you need to Analyze it. What is the problem first? Learn what the solutions are. Have a look at what other people have tried to overcome that problem. Were they successful? What did they do wrong? What did they do right? So learn it. Once you learn it, you need to put it into practice. You need to practice it. So that means trying it. Trying it again. Try again. Try, try, try. And when you fail, it's okay. Don't get pissed off. Don't get angry with yourself. Trying and failing is good because you're learning in that process. If you try something and it doesn't work, try something else. Try something else until it works. Try something until you find the solution. There is always a solution to every single problem. That's what I always tell my students personally. Whenever they get frustrated and they get too stressed with the limited amount of time that they might have, the deadlines that they might be facing to get an assignment done, that's stresses them out. But they should always remember, and I always rem remind my students, that there is always a solution. Take a, a step back, breathe in, stay cool, and just remember that there is always a solution to get a problem solved. So once you've learned something new about how to solve that issue, apply it use it, solve the problem, do it. And once you do it and solve the problem, don't look back on it, just move on, move forward. Keep moving, keep flowing. But then later, once you've finished your assignment, you can then feel really proud of yourself and say, hey, I've gone through hell. <laughs> I did a lot of work in the past to get where I am today. You feel proud of yourself to get the next assignment done and to get it done really well. At the end of the day, it's only you you are in charge of your world, you're in charge of your own life and it's only you at the end of the day that can get something done. And once you achieve those challenges, once you get past them, you'll feel so proud of yourself. Everyone does deserve help. Even if you're hard on yourself and you say, no, only I can do it, only I can do it. I'm not going to ask anyone else. I'm not going to ask anyone else. Don't make it difficult for yourself. Just chill. Try asking for help as well, you know. There's always help that's available out there. I mean, I'm here as well. I can help you, you know. Feel free to contact me and ask me some questions. At the end of the day, that's wise. It's wise to ask people who have already been there and done what you need to do now, today. I've done my bachelor's, I've done my master's, and I've done lecturing, I've done private tutoring, I've done seminars, I've done quite a lot of different things. And I've faced those challenges and those barriers, and. I've had to overcome them myself and the only way I did that is by learning about those specific things. So now that I've learned those things, I want to pass them on. I want to pass them on to you and I want to teach you those things. Asking for help is a really wise thing to do. But don't expect other people to do all the work for you. You have to do that work, but you're just asking someone for a little bit of guidance. Once you know what you're doing, you can get the tasks done so much easier and quicker. Okay, students, so that's the end of this video of staying focused at university. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've taken something valuable from this. Everyone's different. Everyone's got different tactics and ideas of how to stay focused at university. Share some of your ideas of how you stay focused at university or what you feel some of your really annoying bad habits and distractions are subscribe to my channel I'm going to be uploading so much more that's going to be helping you students at university you can add me on Instagram add me on Facebook and contact me for help I've also published a book for students specifically for paraphrasing check that out I'll see you next time take care for now wait wait before I go always feel proud of your achievements that you make with the progress 
progress that you make. A quick overview of everything. So you gotta remember that you need to get things done one step at a time. Recognize what your distractions are and try to use them in your favor. Build productive habits that are gonna put you in the zone to stay focused. Get rid of the bad habits, okay? So replace bad habits with good habits. Have a vision. Have a long-term vision if you can, but also more importantly, have a short-term vision of what you can achieve and where you wanna be. Turn a fear into fuel. Use that energy of that fear flip it around and use it to your advantage to get stuff done. Be a problem solver. Look at challenges as being opportunities to learn something new. Recognize your skills and your talents and apply the knowledge that you've learned to get stuff done and stay focused at university. There you go.